Hello guys, I'm Brendan. I'm here to teach you some basic MIG welding lessons. Today we're just going to start off with the very basics. A few things I use when I'm MIG welding. So, I've still got the torch. I've always got a hammer with me when I'm tacking things together. A wire brush, a square. It's important to have a round file to clean your torch out, uh, to clean your shroud. You always need a pair of snips for nipping the end of your wire if it's too long and they become a multi-tool for changing, help changing your tips, your adapters. I've got a spring there which holds the shroud on. I've also got the anti-spatter, that's just out of shot. That's a water-based anti-spatter. That's tip dip, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then I've got my inner lens Replaceable lens for the welding screen, the welding helmet, that's the outer lens. And I say you've got your adapters and your tips. So let's get started with the torch. Firstly, this is an active workshop. This is my business, so it's not like one of these videos where everything's bought brand new and everything's just for the video. No, this is this is a, an active money earning workshop so that's why everything does get used and filthy as you can see so firstly you've got your torch you've got your trigger you had the gas come out the wires been extended you get rid of that I like to cut it back if you can see I like to cut it back about 10 mil so we've got about 10 mil sticking out maybe a bit less about that much but five six mil maybe so we've got that first of all the maintenance of the torch we take the shroud of off and if you look it's got spatter inside it this is what I've got my round file for I'm always cleaning so that's why I've got a round file so now you know about that and then you've got then you've got, you've got your tip and you've got your adapter. The tips wear out over time. When I say wear out, they just they stick. The wire doesn't go through them smoothly. So they need replacing. That's probably still okay, but just for the video, I'm gonna change it. And then you've also got your adapter. You see the little holes for the gas? So on that, luckily, they're coming out okay but well it's stiffening up now they stiffen up through the amount of heat what goes through them so even though these two bits are replaceable uh, this isn't so if that gets damaged you have to replace the torch so the spring which is here you've got the spring like I say look this is a daily thing look how dirty everything is this is a fully active workshop what I'm in here welding every day so your spring goes on there and it, and it just sits on this little bit here and there so that will just screw off like that and it just helps you put your shroud back on just make sure it's sat properly first where is it sitting? oh no it's around there look there sat there so then that just slides on and it's stiff and that just slides off. But anyway, we we'll put a new adapter in. So I can feel this is wearing a little bit. No, it's not too bad with that. Yeah, that's okay. So then we'll just give it a little nip. Like I said, your cutter's become a multi-tool. So just a little nip, don't over tighten it. And then get your... Same with that, a little nip. And that's back on. Now we're ready to weld. We're not going to put the spring on. Uh, they're actually okay, so I'm not going to throw them. So let's have a look. Firstly, we're going to want to get some steel. And we get some steel. A, a nice tip is don't keep your tools close to where you're welding because you'll get spatter on them you get welding spatter on them 
especially like with squares you can see I've just there might be some little grind marks on it where I've cleaned it up with the grinder where the odd spatter gets on it you don't you don't want your tools near you when you're welding so so just as a test piece I'm gonna tack it on both ends and before you tack and you've got people around you it's a common thing in every welding workshop you say watch your eyes or eyes and someone knows you're going to arc up so I'd say eyes just a small tack on the end just a small tack on the end and then on the other side but what will happen with, with welding is you tack, you tack there and that bit wants to lift because when your weld shrinks uh, so as it cools it shrinks just like uh, expansion when things are hot and contraction when things are cold so that's why we've got a hammer I'm just looking at the gap down there watch your eyes right so straight away there were bad earth there was a bad earth because this bench isn't perfectly clean and I'm my wires sticking out now so I just need to shorten that again and that's the problem when you, I should have cleaned the bench down first, but I was too excited to make a video. Watch your eyes. You see, I don't know if you can see it on the video. Yeah, there's like, it's, it's arced through. You can just see it there. So you'll get a mark underneath where it's arced through. It's just, that's just a normal, regular thing. But if the bench is cleaner, you've got less chance of it doing that. But this is just a demonstration. So, on your angle of your torch so this is six mil plate this is 50 mil by six i've just done it six inch long 150 mil long so your angle of your torch to do a t fillet you want to be 45 degrees this way so i'm 45 degrees there but now there's some people say it's okay to drag but i've always been taught and the majority of people mig welding push like that but the angle of your torch I've always been told for it to be 70 degrees to the workpiece. So 70 degrees that way, and then 45 degrees that way. So if I was starting here, what I also do as well, before I do a run, I do a ghost run, just to make sure my torch isn't gonna, well you can't see that, sorry. Uh, I do a ghost run, just to make sure my torch isn't gonna pull on something you know, this is a four meter torch. They've got loads of things sticking out and, and if it snags on something and you start welding and then you can't, and you can't go any more forward. So, uh, so I always, always try to do a ghost run if possible. Now, my weight, I've got a tiny bit of weight on my little finger there. You can use two hands. I don't want to cover it for the video though. So I'll just use one hand and I do a ghost run knowing that I can make it all the way. So that's that. So now we're ready to weld. I'm going to start at the right hand side. I've put a filter on the camera just so you can watch me weld. And I'm starting in the corner at that angle. Watch your eyes. There you go, that's your six mil fillet. There's a tiny bit of spatter stuck to it, but that'll clean off. Uh, maybe it's a bit hot to touch at the minute. But, let's have a look. Yeah, they'll chip off. But what I did do, I sprayed the anti spatter onto it. So before I welded, just give it a little bit of the anti spatter. That's important. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go a little bit more advanced. So you're learning that fast. I'm going to show you something else. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start with uh, with the tip of the wire. 
that's, that, that's a little bit long at the minute. I'll, le I'll leave it long for a second, just to point out where I want you to go. So, we're going to start with the tip of the wire pointing into this, the toe of the weld, the very bottom corner. And what we're going to do is, where's my chalk? So, that's your steel, that's your fillet from the side. And you've just done a weld there, like that. So, by us pointing our wire there, we're going to now do a, we're going to now do a second weld there. Can, can you see it very good? So that's our weld we're going to do. So that's been our centre of our weld there. We're now going to make the centre of our weld here. And we're going to put another bead, the same size there. We're not going to, it, we're not doing it at the side of each other. It doesn't want to look like that. It doesn't want to look like that. Oh, it's off, off screen, sorry. It doesn't. So that's your first bead. Your second bead doesn't want to start there and look like two humps. It's your half and half in it. Half onto the steel and half up the weld. Because then, after we've done that run, then we're going to have this as our centre. Well, maybe, maybe a little off. What we're going to do is, we're going to cap that. This is called a multi-run. So we're probably going to end up with about a 10 mil fillet. 10 by 10. Uh, and I think you're doing that well, that you're ready for a multi-run. So basically, on you, this is 6 mil steel. This is 6 mil steel. You wouldn't need any more than a 6 mil fillet on 6 mil steel. It'd be pointless doing a 10 mil multi-run on 6 mil steel. It doesn't need it. It only needs... No, it doesn't need anything thicker than it is. But if you're welding, let's say this were... 15 or 20 mil plate, then then you can do your then you can put a nice big run on it. And this machine here, this welder is only a, is only a 240 volt Lincoln. It's a Powertech 271C, but it's a 255 amp, 240 volt single phase welder. The three phase 415 or 440 volt welders put the put the weld down a hell of a lot better. But this 240 volt, it's uh, it's quite good. It is quite good. I've had it. I've had that one about eight years. There's another. There's another one there under that. Them overalls. That's 300 amp uh, SIP. That the SIP is more powerful, but I like the Lincoln. Uh, and it's and it's powerful enough to do multi runs, so I can weld just about anything with it. So, right, I'm gonna. I'm going to stop. So that is the next stage of a multi-run. So we've literally done that done that stage. One, two, and now we're gonna do the third the next stage here. So I'll just lay the third weld down and you'll see. There you have it guys, that's about a 10 mil multi-run. Sometimes we've had to do 16 mil multi-run, so you'd say you'd put one down, then you'd put two down like I've done there, and then you'd put three on top. That's more, probably that's gonna go 16 to 20 mil. But at a company I worked at, where we used to weld, 100 mil plate, 50 mil plate, they even welded 160 mil plate, as long as the plate was uh, heated up enough, you, you know, a 16 mil fillet welder be enough. Like I said, I am coded. I have got the codings for MIG welding, so my welds have been tested. They've been, they've had all the tests. What they do to, for you to pass your codings. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped. Uh, I'll be making another video, and I'm numbering them all. So this is video number two. Number one was my introduction to my channel. And number three will be coming soon.